So you have these curiosity uh, yeah. conversations. You've had anywhere from one a day to a few dozen a year, depending on, I guess, the time of your life. Well, I try, yeah, in my n life now, the last 25 years, I do them without fail every two weeks, a discipline of doing them every two weeks. And the thinking behind them is what? The thinking behind them is it's, um, it tests your ability to communicate because it's Nobel laureates, uh, John Nash, who I met and turned, made a movie called A Beautiful Mind that he became the subject of. Um, it, you have to understand the, the engine of what they do for a living. So I have to study about the engine, whether it's biochemistry or physics or whatever it is. I have to understand that well enough that I can ask interesting enough questions to them in a language that I don't know at all, that I'm just kind of struggling with. But I have to prove that I've studied and I have to ask good enough questions that it's a good date. They're designed to be the best date they've ever had. Well, so I want to ask you about some of them and get your reaction, what, what comes to mind from that experience. Okay. The first one that kind of plays off what you just said, Michael <laughs> Jackson. Oh, Michael Jackson was amazing. There was a reason that all of a sudden he wanted to meet me. I owned a, you know, a book that was interesting to him and he wanted to meet. And I was just blown away. And he came in to, uh, on his, I walked him from the waiting, from our lobby to my office, but he had that glove on and, and the high voice. And I thought, wow, I don't think I can talk to him seriously with that glove on. I said, do you mind if you take your glove off? And he said, he looked at me like, excuse me, no one's ever asked me that question. And I said, yeah, would you, would you mind taking the glove off? And he eventually said yes. I didn't have to, I just had to ask him nicely a few times. And when he took his glove off, his voice changed. It wasn't that high voice. He had like a real voice. And he became almost like the most brilliant music professor one could ever experience. You know, it was really like Amadeus or something. He spoke about how you create music, how you court, how, how the, your fundamentals of choreography, how they integrate, everything. And it was just this profound hour I had with him. Uh, Elon Musk and the rocket launch. Oh, Elon Musk in the locker. I, I got to know Elon. He was very generous in meeting me long before he had the, you know, early, before, the, before SpaceX. Um, and, and then when he started building SpaceX, I wanted to come see a launch. And I got to see the different stages of the launch and the cheering. I didn't even understand why people were cheering, but other people cried. I mean, it makes me... It's just a you know, really intense experience. What about it touches you so much? The enormity of the space program. And that's kind of what we tried to capture in the launch of Apollo 13. But it's magnified because these are the people that are do making it right there. Their lives, their emotional lives, their intellectual lives are at stake while this is going, happening. So it just, touching. I get very moved by greatness, just human greatness. And greatness can be small things or big things or small things leading to big things, but just human greatness. Jay-Z and American Gangster. The Jay-Z and American Gangster story is a great, is a really gratifying story. So basically I knew Jay-Z uh, long before American Gangster. And all of a sudden now I'm making this movie called American Gangster and I've finished it. And I get a call from Jay that says, I would like to do the soundtrack for American Gangster. And I say, listen, I would love that, Jay. I mean, nothing would make me more proud and more excited to do that, but we already have the soundtrack album. And he says, well, I'll do a second soundtrack album. It'll be a companion that's inspired by, because I'm very inspired by the life of Frank Lucas. I see some parallels in my life. And I said, sure. If you think you can do it, but it has to be done in 14 days. <laughs> and he did it. He performed in it, he wrote it. See, another thing that'll make me emotional. He did everything, he executed a perfect album that became much more uh, 
more important and more popular than the soundtrack album. And uh, I went and saw him one day in the, th in the 13 days that he did it. And I've just marveled at it because, you know, he's kind of a king in his, in his universe. And I just didn't know he could grind it out like that and make it amazing and do everything with that kind of time pressure. But he was inspired and passionate, had commitment, and he did it. So it was, um, I really marveled at his, his, his superpowers. Brian was really heroic. There have been a few times in, in his career that I've witnessed where as a producer, he really just, you know, powered a project through and just excelled like Eight Mile um, uh, and Beautiful Mind to, to a large extent and American Gangster. That, that, that project was dead and buried a few times and he just kept bringing it back. He really made that, made that movie happen, including uh, going as deep as getting Jay-Z to work on the soundtrack. Two other people you've yeah. had curiosity conversations with, Jeff Bezos and uh, Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs, I was just really lucky to have him say yes. And I was very intimidated by him, very, 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 because you can feel the energy of genius. It it's out, comes out of his pores. And with the energy of genius, there's an intolerance, not an impoliteness, but an intolerance that when you say something stupid or you talk too long, I'm just going to have to pivot, <laughs> you know? So that was uh, challenging. And with Jeff Bezos, he came to my office and he was just really kind and humble and had that great laugh then as he does now. And uh, I could have never imagined he'd be the richest man in the world. I mean, I knew he'd be successful and that's why I sort of reached out because he was succeeding at something impossible already. And, um, but he was really easy and you would see glimpses of genius, like his understanding of physics and, and space and the cosmos, you know, he, he understood things with a high level of depth behind it, but didn't feel the need to show off ever. He's not a show off. 